Welcome to the March edition of Cornerstone Connect. We have a very special program planned just for you. Special guests and longtime prayer partners Clayton and Irene share how God used Cornerstone Network in their grandson's life when hope seems lost. Then Tom Hollis stops by to encourage us to remember what God says and letters from the mailbag from you. All that and more coming up next. Welcome, I'm your host, Amanda Brocker, and I have just one question for you. Have you received your Hope Today newsletter in the mail? If not, please give us a call at 888-665-4483 or go to ctvn.org. We love to stay connected. Well, thank you to the many of you who wrote in. I just have to read some of the mail. It says, thank you for your programs. I really like Road Trip to Truth, The 700 Club, Bible Discovery, Hard Questions, Origins, Superbook, Radiant TV, and many others. We thank you, Carol, so much for writing in. It's always so good to hear from our viewing audience. And this is also from another Carol, and she said, Thank you for your programs of David Jeremiah, Billy Graham, uh, Pastor Jeffress, and Standing on God's Word Against Abortion. You know, so many people are encouraged by Jay and Tiffany's program as well. We are so thankful that we have this network, this voice of truth to share the goodness of God. All right, this is from Ruby, and she said, Cornerstone Network is where I get my spiritual feeding. Thank you. I don't drive anymore. I am confined to my apartment on Sunday mornings. I enjoy Andrew Womack, Charles Stanley, David Jeremiah, Billy Graham Classics, and I'm sure many more. Well, thank you, Ruby, for writing in. And just, I want to say thank you to all of you who support our network. If it was not for your love and care, for the good news going out over our airwaves, we would not be here declaring this wonderful news to all. This is from Diane. She said, we watch many programs on your network, Bible Discovery, Dr. David Jeremiah, Perry Stone, Origins, Act, many more. We're so thankful to be able to produce good programming and air other amazing programs that are standing on God's word. Well, coming up next, we have Tom Hollis as he stops by to encourage us to remember what God says. Are you facing a detour? Are things not as expected? Discouragement, frustration, anxiousness, sickness? God loves you more than you can ever know. Romans 8.39 assures nothing in all creation will ever be able to separate us from the love of God. Call our prayer line or connect with us online. Well, Tom, you wrote a great article in our newsletter and you're talking about what God says. So would you bring this article to life for us? Tell us what does God say today? Well, you know, Amanda, I've thought a lot about what God says. Well, you know, the gospel of Jesus Christ, uh, it, it, I've studied the words of how to say the gospel, you know, but the, the scripture says that our gospel is not of words, but of power. It's a gospel of power. So I started thinking about the power of God and about the resurrection. Of course, we're celebrating Easter, the resurrection, the power of God. It wasn't that God gave us like some good ideas, you know, right. it was that Jesus Christ rose from the dead and that same power, that same spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells in you and me and every right. Christian. Amen. In fact, it says this, it says, for I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation for all that believeth, for the Jew first and also for the Greek. That's King James, it means anybody, the Gentiles. And so I thought about that and I, I was thinking, so the power is in, in the truth of, the, of God, but God does say things that have power. And I wanted to just share a few of those as I thought about them. Amen. I think it's so important, you know, the. I don't know, we say the red letter words yeah. of the Bible, you know, <laughs> yeah. but the things that God is saying to us and they should be weighty and cause us to pay attention. 
So well, tell us, talk about a few of those. Okay, well, the first thing that God says is God says, I love you. Okay, and I think maybe for, for some that are watching, that, they have, that might be the hard, biggest hurdle, right? Uh, does God really love me? Why are, are all these things happening? But it says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Well, what does that mean, for God so loved the world? Does he love the trees and the rocks? No, he loves the people. He loves you and me. And it says world, so that means the whole world, man. That means everybody. God so loved the world, and we need to remember that. And then he says, you can have life. He says, the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy, but I came that they might have a life, Amen. and not just barely getting by, but abundance. And you know, a lot of times we've taken that to mean finances, and certainly abundant finances is, is, is something that we all desire to have, to have what we, what we need. But it's more than that. It's, it's about abundance in relationships, abundance in, in fellowship with God, abundance in peace in our heart, all those things. So God says you can have life. So uh, again, there may be people watching you say, I don't have that kind of life. Well, God wants that for you. God cares about you. He loves you. And he came that you might have life. Amen. I'm just thinking, you know, of all the people who have been with us on this journey of Cornerstone Television Network and how appreciative we are because your message is really the message as a whole that we get to share 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And if it wasn't for their love and support, you know, we wouldn't be able to do this. We wouldn't be able to share this very important message. Well, the gospel is good news, right? That's what it means. It means good news. So uh, the good news isn't, hey, you're all messed up. The good news is, hey, we were messed up and God has changed us. God has uh, come into our lives, forgiven us of our sins. You see, because the next thing is, after you can have life, is that sin, God says that sin separates you and me. And you know what? That's every one of us. It separates, we all had to come to this place where we realized our sins, the Bible says our, the, your sins have made a separation between you and God. And it also says, for all have sinned. So I've sinned, believe it or not, Amanda Brocker has sinned. <laughs> yeah. uh, believe it or not, everybody on the face of the earth has sinned. Everybody who's ever lived has sinned except Jesus. That's why he's the perfect sacrifice for our sins, mine and yours. And uh, that, that wall of separation, we can't do anything to go through that wall. God's on the other side, we're on this side. Sin is the wall. But God himself came through that wall, Amen. through Jesus Christ, broke down that wall, and has uh, reunited if we accept him. And that's, that's the final thing is, God says, receive me as Lord and Savior. And this is one of my favorite scriptures, man. It says, but as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become children of God. It doesn't say, but as many as went to church, but as many who gave their money away, but as many as prayed a lot, or as many as read the Bible a lot. It doesn't say any of that. As many as received him, to them, to them he gave the right to become children of God. So for you, if you want to be a child of God, receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior through prayer. Just invite him in. Say, Lord, I know I've messed up. Forgive me of my sins. Come in and be my Lord and Savior. And when you do that, then you're going right into the power of the gospel. That's right. We are so grateful for every moment here at Cornerstone Television that we get to share that very important good news. And if it wasn't for your love and your support to our network, we wouldn't be able to do this. So we are all, we stand in awe of God, I believe, every year that we get to proclaim the good news of the gospel because God sends faithful people like yourselves to keep this network on the air, to keep us on all those platforms, whether it be YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, we are getting out there and sharing the good news. And I know as our COO, you have much gratitude toward the people who give in to this ministry. Absolutely. Thank you so much for letting us do this great ministry. Thank you so much for giving sacrificially and being willing to say, I want to be involved in the gospel. Thank you. Amen. Well, coming up next, CTVN prayer partners, Clayton and Irene share their story. Your hearing is vital. You need to hear it first. But then you need to be not on the wayside to be in the center, receiving God's word. Because of God and His peace, we now have good morale. God 
is not who you want him to be. He is who he is. The Lord will respond and he will cause them to be activated in your life. He'll respond to what you proclaim. When you get to where you cast your care over on the Lord, it's exciting. Putting the fear of the Lord into our heart, that's where Paul starts his explanation of the saving grace of God's gospel. God is speaking to us. He's saying, this is what we did. As we read his word, we learn the power of Jesus Christ. You see, when you're stagnant, you're, you're going backwards and you don't even know it. He sent me as that burning bush to say, get back in the game. Get your fire back, get your passion back. It's still gonna happen. We have to look at the original language and what was intended by this particular phrase. Most people live in fear. They live in fear of all different kinds of things that could possibly happen to them. This is not the will of God. And so with great power, there always needs to be great humility and giving God the credit. Because the end times are about God fully fulfilling His promise, His unconditional promise to Israel. Now, realize that is God, and with God, all things are possible. Allow me to introduce Clayton and Irene. They have been longtime prayer partners at Cornerstone Network and have seen God work in miraculous ways. Well, welcome, guys. I'm so glad you're here on Cornerstone Connect, but you have a powerful testimony. First of all, I want to know, how did you all come here to be prayer partners? Chuck Hamby and Linda King. They, they were recruiters. Uh, they asked me uh, one day out of the blue, Linda asked me if I would be willing to take the phones during uh, the uh, Born to be Free program. Yeah. And uh, it was okay with me because I stay up at 2 o'clock in the morning anyway. But uh, Chuck Hamby is a really awesome guy. Well, he's gone now, but yeah. he was awesome the whole time I knew him. And he asked me to take the phones, and he kind of mentored me a little bit and uh, helped me to become who I am today. Amen. Amen. Well, talk to us. So you guys don't just have one child. How many children do you have? We have three children. Okay. One no longer with us, okay. unfortunately. But that's a story, too. Yes. Uh, Carter <coughs> and Bear and Jonathan and uh, Clayton, who has passed. But they're all like wonderful kids. Amen. By so the grace of God. That's right. Today's miracle is actually about one of your grandchildren. And yes. which of your children does he belong to? Carter. Carter. Carter, okay. And what's his name? His name is Corian. Okay, so paint us the picture. Tell us a little bit about Corian before we get into well, the story. Corian, Corian was our grandson. He was uh, Carter's kid. We're kind of <clears throat> very energetic, active people. And uh, Corian one day was out with his friends monkeying around like kids do. And they, were, they decided to climb up on his uh, uh, equipment uh, they were 40, he was 40 feet in the air when, for whatever reason, he lost his balance and he came down 40 feet onto a concrete floor in an abandoned mill. They shouldn't have been in there. He says that. But anyway, the short version is he broke 26 bones in his body oh and was not expected to live. It was touch and go for two and a half weeks. Well, when we got the news, I went into Chuck's office and Chuck prayed with me. And we prayed for his deliverance. We prayed that he would not be uh, permanently injured. We prayed for his uh, restoration. And Chuck led the prayer. Well, oddly enough, this kid, he broke 26 bones in his body. He was not expected to live, but he didn't fracture his back nor his skull. The, some of the bones in his face were broken, but... <clears throat> He's laying in a hospital. It was terrible. And uh, I was devastated. I'm the grandfather, what can I say? Mm -hmm. And I got with Chuck 
and he prayed with me and I felt better. And I knew it would be all right. Yeah. Well, Corian was not expected to live. He broke both femurs and uh, one of his feet, he broke five bones in one foot. That's pretty hard to do, but uh, he managed it. And uh, they put rods in his legs, you know, to keep them where they're supposed to be. Did several surgeries. And uh, two and a half weeks later, they decided he was going to live. And so, you know, there's part one pray, prayer. And then part two was that he would not be permanently injured. And uh, he was supposed to be in bed for a year. They didn't expect him to be able to stand in a year. Well, he was on a routine checkup in a wheelchair in the doctor's office. And he said, when can I stand up? Or when can I get out of this chair? And the doctor said, when you can stand up. So he got up and walked out of the office two and a half months later. Oh my goodness. Two and a half months, this child goes from dying to very active. It did take him a while to recover, but then he went into uh, soccer. He did some MMA, he studied Kung Fu, all of that. He's now a rock climber. 10 years later, he's climbing rocks, like, you know, cliffhanger and stuff. No and, fear. Uh, no fear. no fear. Oh my goodness. So God delivered him even from, I would have a fear of falling. I would think yeah. like after that accident the, and he has no fear. He's no an awesome fear. young man and he's yeah. motivated, energetic, yeah. and he, he's very uncomfortable with anybody paying attention to what happened to him because he is humble enough to not want to be that guy. Yeah. You know, in talking to him about being able to do this right. without embarrassing him. He was very clear that he doesn't want to be known as that guy. Yeah. And uh, I can respect that. Right, right. So, Irene, let me just ask you, you're both amazing prayer partners. You both know how to pray the Word of God. And, I mean, God's Word works. But was there, like, a scripture that you really stood on during that time? Hmm. Well, see, the 23rd Psalm is my favorite. Yeah. And I just knew that God wasn't going to let him go. God had purpose for him. So I just stood on a 23rd Psalm for my grandson. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. The Word of God works. And yes. he is a restorer. Just thinking about that. Faithful, the Lord is my faithful, shepherd. Faithful, faithful. Yes. I shall not want Amen. Amen. So when you look at him today, you see the glory of God manifested oh, yes. in his life. Isaiah 53, 5. Yeah. By his stripes, we were healed. Amen. It happened before we got sick. It happened before we got hurt. We were already healed. That's right. Amen. You went back to that word and you stood. Yes. Amen. So for all those parents or loved ones out there that are standing on the Word of God and believing for healing, what would your encouragement to them be today? Psalm 91. We will not fear the arrow that flies in the day, nor the pestilence that comes in the night, nor the worrisome destruction that comes at noonday. It shall not come nigh thee. That's what it says. We stand on that. Well, what a beautiful and powerful testimony. Thank you for your willingness to just give us a glimpse into your lives. And thank you for all those people that you have prayed for over the past 12 years. It's been a while. <laughs> like, yeah, you were here. You came like right around the time that I was here. So I remember, you know, just those beginnings. And we all love Pastor Chuck Hamby. But I encourage you that if you are standing on God's word and believing, know that he is a God that fails not and he will deliver, he will heal, he will save. So continue to stand on God's word. Well, stay tuned. We'll be right back. Listen, we were all sinners and we were all, while we were in sin, Christ died for us. I know that when I pray, that God and I have a special relationship. And I think that it's gonna be the same way when we get to heaven. We live 
in a society and a culture that cannot handle disagreement. We know what the Bible says is true and the proof really is all around you. Well, these look really good and we're going to roast them at 400 degrees for 12 to 15 minutes. Okay, God, you want me to do this gospel album, I want to do it. Let's make it happen. And by gosh, he did. Lord, give me a revelation of my heavenly Father's love. But just know every morning when you rise, God's mercies are new. And not by your death, you give me strength in my times of distress. What's amazing, he wants you to know what's on his mind and on his heart for this day and for this hour. Now, some people say to use a whole bottle. I think that's too much. So I usually do about half a bottle. You give your all and your life to Jesus and yield it all to him, your life will never be the same. First starting the program, the, the TV station, and uh, I was working for Teen Challenge, a Christian drug and alcohol rehabilitation program. And we met a Christian businessman named Harold McCamish, who was one of the founding board members here. And we had a small construction company called New Life Builders. And we built the very first building uh, that was up here. So that goes more than 45 years ago. So it's been a long, long time that I've interacted with uh, Cornerstone Television. And then I pastored a church, Christian Life Church of Trafford for 34 years. It's just down over the hill here. My, there was more than a dozen people that attended my church that worked here. And I remember coming up here and working on a telethon and answering phones. And so it's been a long and wonderful relationship between myself and my church and uh, Cornerstone Television. My wife worked here in partner services for 26 years. She loved working here and we have so many close friends. Uh, Rhett met uh, Russ and, and Norma many years ago and uh, Paul and his family are, are good friends of ours and so we've just had this connection that's, that's gone on for a long, long time. I'm involved in a, um, a ministry called Caring Hearts Ministries, which was founded by Harold McCamish when he was uh, living in Phoenix, Arizona. And uh, he was attending church and he met a retired pastor named Oliver Nell. Pastor Nell said to him one day, he said, let's go bless some people down in Mexico. And he had an old 1969 pickup truck and they threw a bunch of stuff in it clothing and food and whatnot, and they drove the four hours down into San Luis, Sonora. They just started driving through the streets and they came upon an orphanage and they got involved with this orphanage. And through that one encounter, uh, this ministry of Caring Hearts was born and uh, it, it just spread out and blossomed into what we have now of 12 core ministries. Cornerstone Television, which has been involved with us, with Caring Hearts for, for uh, almost 25 years. As a pastor nearby and as a person having interaction with Cornerstone, I think it's important to see how far reaching the ministry is. A lot of people think, okay, it's a Christian television station in Pittsburgh that uh, ministers to people in Pittsburgh. Well, it ministers to a lot more people than just Western Pennsylvania, or even just the United States. There's one great story. A young man was uh, sitting around on New Year's Eve and uh, just wasn't, didn't know the Lord and wasn't living right and uh, into all kinds of things that were harmful and came home on New Year's Eve and supposed to be a happy, fun time, plopped down in front of the television. He was miserable, depressed, discouraged. He started flipping around the dial and he came across CTV and he started watching and they uh, gave a salvation message and he prayed to receive Christ as his savior. And he came down to the station a couple days later and he met with Tom Hollis 
he told them what happened and Tom said, well, you need to be in a church and he gave him a list of churches to look into. And he came to our church, Christian Life Church. Long story short, he became a member, went on to be uh, one of our elders, one of our deacons, and has attended there now for more than 20 years. So you have that happening right here in Pittsburgh. This man was just from a few miles away from here. Your partnership with us in, in Caring Hearts is 2,500 miles away in a little town called San Luis, Sonora, Mexico, where so many people in such great need uh, are having those needs met, are hearing the gospel, are coming to Christ, and having their lives transformed. So you, when I see this interaction with the station, myself, our church, and all the people that have been involved and the lives that it's touched, uh, I see that, I, I think of the, Jesus talking about the mustard seed. It's the smallest of all seeds, and yet when you plant it, it becomes one of the largest garden plants, and, and, and like a tree where the birds can come and, and rest in it and find shade. And uh, I, I see that seeds planted here that go out over the airwaves and provide this ministry that is so huge that so many people find Christ, find healing, find deliverance, all through the one seed that's planted, the one word that's spoken. I always enjoy our time together and hearing what God is doing here at Cornerstone and in the lives of those that are a part of our network. I just want to go back to some of the mail. Thank you again for writing in. This is from Barbara. She said, I would like to thank you for your prayers for my feet and ankle. There is improvement happening. And this one didn't have a name on it, but she said, I enjoy sister to sister origins, the joy of music, hope for today. Pastor Gary, Jay and Tiffany, the life program. And this one too comes from Mary. And she said, thank you uh, for your program. I hope today, oh, it was when Pastor Jay and I had the opportunity to minister. And she just said how she learned things that, you know, she had pondered before. It's so important. You know, we have Bible questions and I know that God's using Cornerstone Television to just bring answers to reveal who God is to you because God desires to make himself known to you and I, and this is, um, I'm not sure of who it's from, but they wrote a lot. We love it when you write in, but she said, please know Cornerstone, you are so appreciated in this hour of the rain being poured forth on all God has for this time. It's so important to be in tune with the Holy Spirit. And I just thank you so much for writing in. Our heart's desire is to present the good news of the gospel so that all will hear and know Jesus.